How's it going guys? It's the Weed Mine. The case is in. The Cooler Master HAF 700 EVO. This big old dude. And that box was 64 pounds shipped. All right, so the godlike build is going to get going here. And uh, I told myself I was going to start recording at the very beginning, unboxing and all that stuff, but I kind of got ahead of myself. I got it. And I was like, ooh, I want to play. And quickly found out that this is going to be a task. This is going to be a two to maybe even a three day build. All right, so coming over here, maybe I should lay this down, but oh my God, there's so many parts, it's ridiculous. This, I need to put three fans here a radiator on the top, and then three more fans on the top. <laughs> there is so much. Look at this. There is so much here. It, it, this is actually overwhelming. It, it seriously is. My feet, the phone's even eating at me again. Oh, my God. Okay, should I lay this thing down? I suppose I could. I got so many fans. I got a Red Bull here. I am so glad for this thing. This is a, This came with my EVGA X99. It's an EATX, like, little reference board. But it's perfect for sizing stuff, and believe me, I needed to, <laughs> to check a few things with this. Oh, I don't even know if I should lay this down because there's so many wires. Is, there, is, is it safe? Nothing is safe with this. Oh my god. I, I kid, but geez. Look at that. It's like got a controller right here. It's got a controller up here. I got extra controllers. I don't even know if I'm going to need them. Okay, let's lay this thing down and hope I don't destroy nothing. Okay. Whew. Okay. Oh, I just dropped a screw. That's not good. All right. Yeah, I'm a total... I'm LTT right here, right? I, I got that pro build going. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm just doing hyperactive here. Okay, so the idea is... Well, we already have this guy, and that's a 480 uh, radiator. And basically, you're going to have four 120-millimeter fans on that guy. Like this. Boop four of those just boop, 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 and that's where they're <laughs> going to be the pump is going to sit right here like on this little mount thing so the pump's going to be like here-ish you know, here, I'll, I'll just set it on there lightly but it'll be raised out on top of one of the whatchamacallits and it'll have the reservoir up top that's going to work out just fine i hope <laughs> this radiator there there is like i don't even have a millimeter uh of playroom here I seriously don't like I took there were two fans pre-installed here I had took them out put this guy on and it just barely fits like even the fittings up here like I had like this one fit this one not quite I just pushed on this just a tad bit just to get a little bit of leeway out of it and it worked fine it's <laughs> such a tight fit there um, not too sure that's meant to be like that but I'm hoping it is because once I put it like that it fit it's snug. It's perfect. It shouldn't be in the way, I hope. Oh, no. Okay, let's move this over here. This guy is going to be mounted up around here somewhere. And if you notice, see how I got those four uh, ports right there? That's not great, like, at all. So I need to figure out something there. And like putting this here, I don't have much of a choice but to put it in this configuration. Um, most of the time when you do water cooling, you want these up high, right? You don't want them down below. But since this one was meant to be like kind of in the middle of the loop, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. But the problem is it's got this little thing up here. Like, like, oh, man, it's, it's so crazy. Okay, you see how it's it's a little shorter and then it curves right here, right? It's the only reason that fits. <laughs> this little bitty curve. If that curve wasn't there, it wouldn't fit. And I can't do it on this side because there's something weird with it and it's stupid. Oh my God. I'm seriously going to lose it. Um, I really want to try to get this reversed but I just can't. There's there's a little tiny extra lip up here. It's a little different from this guy, but it just won't fit up there. So I got to make do. I got to figure out how to mount this guy as as far over as I can, something like this, because here's what the loop is supposed to be. All right. We're going to go from the pump, which is right here, 
and it's going to shoot over to here where the first radiator is. Okay, it's going to go right there. Then it's going to pop out and it's going to go to the first GPU. Then it's going to chain right to the second GPU. From that GPU, I want it to go to one of these. All right, and then this guy basically goes to this radiator. And then this radiator goes to the CPU block. And then the CPU block goes over to this guy. And you see how that's kind of in the way? <laughs> There's going to be more fans and everything there and so much crap in the way that I, it's going to be really weird and difficult to make this work properly. Um, I wanted to use acrylic tubes and I still plan on doing it, but in order to make this work, you know, somewhat normal with good flow and no kinks or anything, I think I'm going to have to mix in some flexible pipe with it. I don't like that I'm probably going to have to do that, but it's going to be oddly crowded in this huge case. It blows my mind. <laughs> it shouldn't be crowded in this case. Uh, but it looks like that's uh, how we're going to have to deal with it. Now, this guy over here, of course, I could flip him over and do this. But then I have to get a run from way up there all the way over here somehow. And then it would be coming right back. That's just stupid. And... I could make things a lot simpler on me where I could do GPU, GPU, and go straight to the CPU and then just radiator, 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 get a lot of cooling and everything. But what people, it see, I see a lot of <laughs> runs done in water cooling that just don't make any sense to me, right? If you hit the first GPU and then you go immediately to the second GPU, well, the water's heated up a little bit, which means the second GPU on the loop is going to get a little bit warmer water. Generally, not that big of a deal because the water's getting cycled really, really quick. So it's not terribly that big of a deal. But if you want all ideal uh, conditions or whatever, you go radiator, GPU, radiator, GPU, radiator, whatever else, right? And that's one of the reasons why after the second GPU, I want to at least hit a radiator so before it gets back to the CPU, because, you know, get rid of that hot air, get rid of the heat. It's the whole point. So this guy is going to be fairly interesting, and I'm going to have to come up with a couple little ideas. Everything will work. Everything will fit. I will make it fit, but I guess we can come back in a couple of minutes here when I make some progress. Well, we got a little bit done here, and uh, we've run into a few snags. Let's see. We got three fans here, We've got a radiator here. These are 140, 140, 140, along with a matching radiator. Underneath, which no one will be able to really see, are three more fans. So it's going to have like a double going here or whatever. So that's six fans right there. We got four 120 millimeters back behind there, along with our pump and reservoir. Everything is all good with these, but here's the big problem. All right, the one up here, the one up here, we cannot install. All right, let me grab this thing. Oh, where'd I put it? Nope, oh, it's over here. Oh boy, this guy actually kind of sucks, but it doesn't matter what kind we put here, it wouldn't work because if you come over here, you can barely see it, but those two inlets right there that are blocked, if I put a fan on this radiator, it will completely block that off. And the same goes over here. It'll just completely block that off. So we can't put those there. What I can do is put it here, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, there's a little adapter that sits right here. And since we have the 200 millimeter fans that came stock, uh, basically what I'm going to do is just go bloop, like this and it'll mount. Won't be any fans on this side. Uh, I, I just can't because it's just the, the everything will smack into each other and it's stupid. But yeah, technically I could put three more fans, but they'd still be underneath. So not much of a thing there. So that's what's going to be weird is up here we're going to have four inlets. So we're going to have to make some kind of really weird runs. Uh, we will have three 140 millimeter fans up on the top here, just standard stuff. And oh man, this is just a pain. 
Yeah, it's becoming more of a pain than I thought. Uh, I was hoping I had a little bit more leeway to work with. And as big as this case is, you figure there would be? <laughs> um, I guess the mistake that I made, if you can say I really made a mistake, is over. I should not have bothered with a radiator here, right? And I should have gotten a 360 radiator here. Uh, I'll shorten this up so like down here, we wouldn't have that last fan. It would just be one, two, well, everything would get pulled down so that everything would sit down just a little bit lower. And then put a couple of, we could actually put two radiators up on the top. But then we would have another problem because this mount, the way this mounts up here or whatever, it would have to be lowered down. This would still be up high, which means there wouldn't be a fan or anything here. And it's still kind of weird, right? It's all still kind of weird, but you know, it's a couple of headaches and everything, but I'll be able to get it to work. The problem is running the acrylic line. There's, there's, I was hoping to avoid as many as twists and turns as possible and everything. Cause I got to learn how to bend these things. Right. Um, well, we're going to have a lot of twists and a lot of turns. Okay. <laughs> All right. This port right here, this is the, uh, out pump. It needs to come out go into that first one, but they don't line up. So I need to actually have a bend here that goes this way, a slight little bend to bring it in and then go inside. Uh, this guy is going to go to the first GPU. So basically it has to come up, bend over and then bend into the GPU and it'll have to uh, tilt a little bit or whatever, depending on what it needs. Then the G two GPUs hook up, another one that goes out, over, up to here it just gets all kind of stupid. And we're going to have like a bunch of weird connections up here too. Part of me actually wants to go to standard tubing because it's so, it's going to be time consuming, but you know what? That's fine. That's fine. I've got a ridiculous amount of acrylic tube. If I end up ruining some, I ruin some. I have a little bit of regular tubing and fittings left if I need to do that, or I can always order some. But I really want to avoid doing that because, you know, even as it just sits right now, it's starting to look good. You know, we, I mean, we technically see we got six, seven, eight. We already got 10 fans in the thing. Well, actually 12, including those. So there's already 12 fans in there and I got a lot to go. And it looks clean. I mean, you really don't see much going on until you come over here. Hey! <laughs> this is going to be a cabling nightmare. The worst guy I've ever did. Oh, no. Okay, guys, uh, I have to say that this, this build is actually going to probably take me uh, two or three days easy. I've been working on this thing for hours, and most of the time has been sizing. You know, making sure that before I go committing and start putting everything in that this fits and this fits and this fits. And that's why I figured out that radiator doesn't work there. This was originally supposed to mount down one more, but not so much. I had to raise it up. We got clearance here. Uh, this over here, there's going to be a 10G Ethernet card that sits like right about, let's see, where's that screw? Right about here. So the run from this guy actually has to come out a little bit and sit as close to these fans as possible in order to get clearance and then 45 right down into that or 90 degrees right down into that. It's, it's iffy. <laughs> it's definitely iffy. So, you know, th this is one of the, most of the time whenever I build a computer, I literally have it done within hours. Okay, this one, I've been working on it for hours, and it really does not look like I've gotten anywhere. It's all about testing stuff. And I had to do this. Check this out. Okay, this is just a silly little thing. What these are, I had to mount them to my little work desk here, and... Basically, you take a heat, heat gun, as far as I know, I'm, I'm going to YouTube it. Uh, take a heat gun, heat it up, and then you pull these to get to the kind of angle that you want to get, right? So if you need a 90-degree angle, you heat it up and slowly pull, 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 and it'll do that. And if you need a 180 or whatever, you got this guy, right? Nice little thing or whatever, and these things, you know, I got them bolted down. And then you also have like a cord that you can put through these to pull while you use a heat gun to heat it up. I watched the YouTube video a long time ago. I need, I just need a refresher. But anyways, it's still got a long ways to go. I'll come back when I got some more done. Okay, so we've made a little bit of progress, but unfortunately I did run into one little bit of a roadblock 
and that is using the hard tubes, the hard acrylic tubes. Now there's plenty of places in here where I can use it, but there's a few where it's like really, really hard to get to. Like these two guys in here, and I even did like this stupid little run over here, if you guys could see it, probably not, but uh, if I use all hard tube, all the acrylic, it's just going to be an absolute nightmare. And I don't know if I can realistically get it done and actually have it look decent. <laughs> um, the more I play with this case, the more I take a couple points off for Cooler Master because, you know, as big of a case as, and versatile as a case this is, it is a great case, but there's just like these little tiny little things that it's like I wish they would have fixed. Uh, for example, this radiator right here, we need like, you know, the, an inch, one little inch, just up or down or something around here where we could have a little bit of extra leeway because these guys are, these little holes up here are just, you know, they're bunched up too much. Uh, the options up here for fans, uh, they seem to kind of be randomized. I don't know. Like, you can do three, three, uh, six 120 millimeter fans up here total. But if you want to use 140, which is what I wanted to use, yeah, it fits up there. It looks all good, but some of it's just kind of meh. And <laughs> the, the, the wires. The wires are just going to be an absolute nightmare. And the hub that it comes with, it's got this guy here. It's all good, but it really needs more ports. And this guy here, you know, I, I'm, other than what it's already plugged in it, I'm probably not even going to use it. It just doesn't seem like any point. Instead, I have to grab a couple of these guys, put these two together. Going to still have to use some splitters, and I'm barely going to make it for getting all the uh, PWM and RGB in there. There's going to be, oh my God, how many is it going? There's all, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 fans. Did I have that right? Yeah, I, I did. 17 freaking fans. Yeah. Not to mention, <laughs> not to mention, there's going to be more stuff because, you know, I, I got the GPU block, I mean, the two GPU blocks that are both going to have RG, uh, ARGB on it, and I'm going to have the CPU block, which has that and a power thing to it, and plus these little uh, GPU bracket holder thing. This, this is going to be interesting. This is going to, this is going to be, this is a huge case. You guys don't, might not realize from looking at it right here, but this case is huge. And I'm actually running out of room. <laughs> One thing that I'm very glad that I didn't do is I got the, the thin radiators, you know, these guys here. I, the reason I did that is because I figured, well, I'm going to be running one, two, three, four radiators. I don't need the big thick boys. I really don't need, need the huge crazy ones. So I got the thin ones and it's a good thing I did because if you want to put one here, you got to use the thin boy. You gotta, you know, there might be something in here, but I didn't see anything to mount it. So you have to use the thin boy here, unless you got a 360 uh, millimeter fan, then it would actually sit into there. Uh, no fans are going to fit here, but we don't need any there because we have it pushing in from the front. And, you know, I was going to get a thick boy here. It's kind of good that we didn't. I mean, we could have pulled out a little bit more. That would have been fine, but, you know. Got this little gap right here. It ain't much to, to play with there. Um, yeah, so anybody who's working on these or wants to do a build, I would actually recommend, like, uh, the radiator back here, don't do the 480. Do a, three, do a 360, and that's about it. Don't plan to put anything here. Don't put any radiators here whatsoever. Just take this whole thing out. Get a fatter radiator there. Maybe, like, a one uh, the 140 uh, wide. Uh down here, you definitely want to get 360, maybe go the double 360 at the top. Uh, over here, you know, I thought this might be a good idea. And while it looks clean, it's going to be a pain. So, you know, I got the parts and everything. I'm going to do it. I will make it work, but I would actually recommend not putting a radiator on the back at that part. So, oh man, I, I've been at this for all too long trying to do this stuff. And actually hours of the work, we're looking at tubing. 
at all the uh, hard tubing over here. You see, I've got all this ridiculous amount of hard tubing, and I'm going to try to do like a mix, right? Uh, I've tried bending and cutting a few. I've gotten the hang of doing it. I spent a couple hours on it. So I don't think that would be a problem, but making any kind of fancy twister turn, multiple turns and everything, uh, it's, it's like you have to come, come in here, kind of eyeball it, go twist it, heat it up, twist it, heat it up, twist it. Really, really tedious stuff to do because you have to do it really, really, really slow and then come back and hope it fits. If it don't fit, go try again and just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And literally, I could probably spend a day or two trying to just run hard line. I don't want to do that. So I went ahead, I ordered some extra adapters. It's going to delay the build a few days while they get here, but... Order some more adapters. I got some uh, fresh tubing coming and everything. So we're going to modify the build a little bit. I wanted it all hard line, hard acrylic line, but in terms of practicality, I can't really use it all that much, especially with how congested things are getting. I'll come back again when we got a few more things done. Well, in the process of getting this done, that is the CPU water block, all right? Looks all good, kind of hefty. I actually really like how it looks. A little bit of a problem though. This is the water block right here for the GPU. It's gonna set something like, oh, let's see. Something like this, right? Right there. And it hits. Right there on top, it just, it, boom, boop, boop, it won't set. So, guess what I gotta do? We gotta order a new CPU water block. Oh, things are progressing a little bit here. <sighs> okay, all the fans are hooked up and wired. I have all the wires, most of everything uh, taken care of. Motherboard and everything, of course, is routed up in there. And take a look at this crap. Oh man, this is wire hell. I'm trying to hold a flashlight here. This is just wiring hell. I thought I'd have enough you know, plenty of room to put all the wires and everything, but my God, I still have another plug or two to go that I know I can fit, but geez, 1600 watt of power supply, that thing, I mean, it take care of what it's got to take care of. But here's the scary thing, right up in this section right here by the CPU leads, the uh, CPU power, I fired it up just to do a quick little test, just to see if it would uh, post real quick and then turn it off. Uh, a spark flew off of that right here. Right here. That's scary. Um, <laughs> you don't want to see sparks flying off your computer. Um, I took things, uh, a lot of things apart, tried to see if anything else was like wrong, tried to figure out what the heck happened. If anything was broke, I can't find any issues. Um, so I'm just continuing with the build for now. Uh, I fired it up a couple more times after that and it seemed to go fine. But we're not going to know for sure until I get this thing completely built in the hard drives and everything in to see if anything actually suffered. I don't think there's an issue. I have a feeling, you know, maybe it was a piece of dust or something that just like, ooh, look at this. And it's, I don't know. But it's worrisome. It's scurry. And I have, to, and I already ordered a new CPU block because the damn thing <laughs> wouldn't fit. Uh, I might have mentioned that already, but yeah. Uh, it's going to be like two days before it gets here. So I basically just had to order a halfway decent CPU water block that doesn't have the fancy thing here and doesn't hang over these stupid uh, little holes. Because otherwise, the GPU block won't fit properly. I keep running into problems. I'll come back with another update. Oh, well, we've certainly made some progress. <laughs> this has been absolutely painstaking. All right, so the CPU water block that we had would not fit in this, and why is that? The godlike motherboard is a little different to where the very first PCI Express slot for the first video card sits up much closer to the CPU than normal. So the CPU water block that I had simply wouldn't fit. It was a big boy. I had to get one that was a little bit smaller, a lot less uh, smaller profile. I found a Corsair one. You know, I was thinking of getting you know EKYB or whatever the heck or something else. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to overclock it and everything, but I'm not going to go like super extreme on it just because I want things running stable. So 
It is what it is. Uh, the liquid in there, no, I didn't put milk in there or anything else, just, just saying. Uh, that's supposed to be RGB reactive or whatever. You can kind of sort of see the lines when the light hits it or whatever. The lines itself tend to uh, change a little bit of color. So, so far so good. It's working out pretty decent. I definitely like that front panel, it's awesome. And I need to customize this guy here, put whatever it is I want there. And surprisingly, it is working so far flawless. I ran a few benchmarks, it's all good. Almost done, but not quite. Uh, I got extra lines sitting at the top there, that's where that loop is, so that I can literally just cut that, run it to the CPU, and we're good. So I kind of pre-planned that out. Oh, this thing has just been a pain. See, what else was an issue? Uh, the, the, the reservoir pump is actually a bit of an issue. I might end up replacing this. Um, for whatever reason, it runs at full tilt, like all the time. It's got that little display there, see? And it has this remote right here. And you're supposed to uh, be able to adjust the pump speed and uh, a couple other settings and such just so that you have more control and you're not running your pump to death. Uh, but it just runs at full tilt all the time. I can change this from manual to auto. It, it receives the, the signal, but that's all it does. You know, manual, auto, manual, auto. If I put it on manual, it still runs auto at whatever the heck settings it is. And if I put it on auto, it just runs itself to absolute death. You, you can see a little dial there and there's a little red zone. It's sitting right in the red zone. So I'm kind of worried it's just gonna burn itself out. Uh, what else did I learn? Um, the RGB controllers. Um, right now, it, it seems it looks like I got everything synced. It you know looks good and everything, but these four fans back here are tied in with the RAM, with these guys for whatever reason, and the front panel. Uh, I have to program those separate from the bordering fans. Uh, the only thing I can think of is to maybe rewire some of the. Uh, the uh, ARGB headers and just point them all towards like one thing, use a bunch of splitters, see what I can do there. Uh, hopefully I can make something like that works, but then that kind of makes the two hubs that I bought pointless. For whatever reason, they're Cooler Master hubs. They're all Cooler Master hubs, but I can't control them, the Cooler Master hubs with the Cooler Master program. That's just stupid. So, you know, the, the Cooler Master program won't even det detect them. It, it, it's dumb, but... Overall, it, it works. I can still customize it. It's just like one little extra step. Uh, the RGB little AT, uh, <laughs> main ATX power right here, it works. It doesn't show up that great, but, you know, if you just wanted a static color, it looks cool. Or there, there's some extreme patterns that you could put on that are like fast and rotate really quick. And it actually looks really cool. So it's hit or miss on depending on what you try to do with it it can look really cool or it can look fairly static and right now it's just kind of static it's just is what it is oh man so uh, i guess i the next step is to get that cpu block and finish up and oh before i go to that part i had to ditch some stuff okay here's the trick with uh 3090s and sli and it's just about anything in sli it needs a lot of PCI Express lanes, okay? Uh, normally the first one where your main uh, GPU is, it runs at like X16 or something. But if you run two uh, cards, especially 39s, you have to have them running at X8. So you don't quite get as much performance as you could out of one card, but the combined you get obviously better. Uh, the issue with that is, is some of the M2 drives take up some of those PCI Express lanes. And I had a 10 gigabit network adapter that also takes up a little bit of that power. And in order to get these to run full power SLI, I had to remove one M2 drive and <laughs> the 10 gig adapter. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. But hey, it works. Everything's good. Uh, eventually I'll just basically go, I have two M2s in there instead of three now. I'll eventually just probably go to like one M2 and just get something that's like two terabytes or something like that. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, it's a little bit of a learning process once again. I've run, ha I've had plenty of SLI systems in the past, but this is the first one I've done in like four or five years or something. And it, it's been a pain. It's been a pain. <laughs> we'll be back when I get some more done. And we are finally done. 
Oh, I almost want to do a cheap montage, put some music on it and everything, but I'm just too tired for this. There's still some things I got to do, little cosmetic things, but so far, this guy just looks plain great. Oh, man. CPU block came in earlier today. It's, it's just a halfway decent one from Corsair. I wanted to get something else, but that's the one that I could get here the soonest or whatever, but... Oh, this computer <laughs> was a nightmare to build, but it's done. I don't have to mess with it. And I did some benchmarking. Okay, I was uh, happy with the results, I guess. I've been tweaking it, trying to push it as far as I can. Kind of, sort of, just based off of like presets and a little bit that I know about GPUs from mining and everything. So uh, I did a book uh, benchmark in 3D Mark, the Time Spy Extreme, and my score was... Oh, let's see. 18,578. Now, that's actually a really, really high score. High enough to put me rank 93 out of the top 100 in the world on 3D Mark for that benchmark. <laughs> uh, rank 93, Division, that's the name I always go by. Score and all that good stuff. So the godlike build is ranked 93 in the world, guys. <laughs> Hopefully, I can tweak it a little bit more and get even going uh, a little higher. But uh, you know what the sad thing is? I haven't even played a game on it yet. I haven't. Haven't bothered. Haven't tried. I've just been building and tweaking and benchmarking. <sighs> <laughs> well, guys, uh, I have to say I'm done with this. It's been one heck of a trip. Um, what could I, I have done differently? Well, I'm just going to get up and walk. Uh, what I could have done differently is uh, a better processor, but you don't really get much better than a 5950X. There's, you know, some regular desktop CPUs that are a tad better, but not by much. So it, it just... Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been working on this computer too, but not by much. So like basically you're into like Threadripper territory if I wanted to get a better processor and then you're adding thousands of dollars to that build. So to be practical, 5950X is where it's at. If I put a Threadripper in there, my benchmark, I'd be even, I'd be significantly higher. It'd be all good. Now the two GPUs in there, those are both the 3090 Supreme X's, right? And I got them overclocked all to hell right now. Uh, they work absolutely great. Of course, as I'm getting this done, the 3090 Ti's come out. So I could have waited and tried to get a couple of those and SLI those, but you know what? I don't feel like spending another five grand. <laughs> it's already there and that is just more than enough. Plus you guys have to remember, you know, SLI is there for like computational workloads. A lot of games don't support it. The benchmarks, it shows up in the benchmarks, of course. So a lot of games that I play, it's actually really only going to make use of one video card. Now, granted, you know, Windows is supposed to have some stuff built into it to where you do get some benefit from SLI even if the game doesn't support it, supposedly, but that's not always the case. And I've seen a few rare instances where some games after actually suffer just a little, little hair because of there's an SLI in the system and it doesn't know how to handle it. So whatever. It's the godlike build. We got it done. The Cooler Master case is absolutely cool. <laughs> it's a lot better than this thermal take piece of crap, I'll tell you that. This is, I ever since I bought that case, I hate it. I absolutely hate that case. Cooler Master HAF 700 Evo. Awesome freaking case. Of course, I have some nitpicky little issues that I would have uh, changed and such. Just a tad bit more room where it really counted. But otherwise, a great case. Uh, thermal take. You guys need to like steal some engineers from Cooler Master or something and actually make a good case for once. Because you guys haven't made a good case in forever, and this one is garbage. The, the, the airflow through this thing is just horrendous. It is bad. So, yeah. Uh, I don't even remember what the name of that's called because I don't care. That's, going to, that's actually the second streaming computer that's coming up. But anyways, guys, I'm really happy with the build. It's done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. We are ranked number 93 in the world on 3D Mark. I'm, I, I got to show that again. Let me, let me pull this up again. Is there, is there, where, where's my thing here? Right there. Look at that. Look at that. GPU score, CPU score. That's some good stuff. 
Now, uh, I'm going to have to tweak it some more in order to do po the Port Royale benchmark and such because the settings that I have in for that are a little unstable for Port Royale, so I'm going to have to tweak it a little bit, but I can't be uh, more happy with that build. <laughs> Being on the top 100 leaderboards without doing any kind of, like, you know nitrous nitrogen cooling whatever the heck it is the liquid nitrogen stuff or some kind of uh phase change cooling and stuff yeah that's that anyways guys uh i don't recommend doing this i just don't there's so many headaches there's so much money it's so stupid and sli is dead why do i have two because i'm dumb okay don't do what i did unless you're rich as hell then you, you do whatever catch you in the next video